Maybe we should have a theme song. I'm not gonna sing it. That would be a terrible idea. Or like a kind of like a theme jingle, like like Seinfeld's got that bum 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 thing. That could work. I would need like a soundboard. And that feels like a lot of things to do before I've woken up. All right, everybody, good morning. Today is Friday, June 14th, 2019. My name's Jeremy, and this snazzy thing right here ah, is my first cup of coffee. Hmm. Well, I am coming to you from the past. Although most videos, all videos really, are in the past. There's a philosophical question we're not going to delve into right now. But I have pre-recorded today's episode, recording it the day before, because I am somewhere on Interstate 89 between Burlington, Vermont, and Boston, Massachusetts, getting ready to fly away as I depart for some portion of work, some portion of vacation trip to Costa Rica. Uh, I began my trip today somewhere around 4 a.m., which obviously means no first cup episode. Now I could get up at 2.30 and record it, but as much as I love you all, I decided that sleeping an extra 30 minutes was a far more sensible option. I don't know if you've ever woken up that early for things but I kind of hate life when I wake up that early. <laughs> I'm fortunate that I am not driving. I am just along for the ride. And uh, it'll be interesting to see whether I feel comfortable enough with people to sleep in the car or I feel like I have to stay awake to make sure they stay awake. And I say that now, but I know I'm going to stay awake because it's the polite thing to do. Which means there's going to be a lot of coffee tomorrow morning. It's not going to be first cup. It's going to be like first bucket tomorrow. So that's what's going on. That's what's going to happen. Now, uh, when I recorded yesterday's episode, I forgot to let everyone know about the Thursday episode that came out. Because I'm tired and I need a checklist. Why don't I just have a checklist in front of me? of all the things I need to make sure I mention. I have one when I record Martial Arts Radio, and that's what I forgot, the Thursday episode of Martial Arts Radio. Yesterday's episode, 405, is called The Value of Pain? Let's check. Pretty sure that's what we called it. If I buried it in here. I don't find the YouTube apps intuitive. Yes, the value of pain. And in there we talk about pain as a teacher and a motivator and all the other things that pain can be. And it's a different kind of discussion. So you might like it. Check it out. You can find it here on YouTube, podcast app, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, wherever you want to go. Is it there? Um, I'm also realizing that we need to make a martial arts radio mug. I need somebody taking notes. Ever feel like you need someone to follow you around and just take notes of the things that you need to do? So, all right. So, what else is happening today? Today, we get to Boston, the the glorious Logan International Airport, where I will be flying from Logan to. Where are we going? Atlanta. You would think I had these things memorized, but I don't. Because it doesn't matter. I get on the plane and it brings me where I need to go. Um, wow, it's a lot of things to do today. Um, Atlanta. Have a four-hour layover in Atlanta. It will be myself, Colin, my friend Colin, and their dog, Roddy. Roddy is a very large, very goofy golden retriever, and I am, I have to admit, the thing I'm most excited about is bringing this dog through an airport and on a plane. 
because if you knew this dog, he's he's ridiculous. He's one of those dogs that just he I don't think he knows he's a dog. He'll carry the mail around. He's very proud at delivering the mail to people. Um, when he sees me, he kind of freaks out. I get the best greeting in the world from this dog. And uh, he's going to feel like a celebrity. He's the type of dog that everyone is going to want to see and say hi to and pet. So it's probably a good thing we have a four-hour layover because it's going to take a while to get from point A to B because everyone's going to want to see Roddy, the service dog. I imagine him carrying like a water bottle through the airport or something. And then being on the plane with him. He's going to be like in the cabin. Apparently we have to fly first class for that. So, oh no, I'm flying first class from Boston to Costa Rica. That's going to be miserable. <laughs> and, and then once we get there, Colin and his wife, they've they've rented a home. They're moving there. This is this is why I'm helping them out. And it's kinda in the jungle. You know, one of these these nice homes in expatriate community. And there are monkeys. And I've had some experience with monkeys, and they can be a bit uh, chaotic. And I know Roddy gets excited chasing squirrels and rabbits. What's he going to do with a monkey? <laughs> Good. Uh, I'm probably just going to keep a camera on him the whole time. Because he's that kind of a dog. So that's what's going on. Uh, the rest of the weekend is helping get things settled and setting up the technology so they can get their office communicating with up here. For those of you that don't know, my past life was in IT before Whistlekick. And I still have a few clients people that I really enjoy working with, like these folks, as evidenced by the fact that I'm flying to Costa Rica with them to help them start this new chapter of their life. Their lives. There we go. Grammar. All right, we got a few questions that you were all kind enough to submit prior to me recording this. I asked for these on Wednesday, and so we got them. So here we go. Let's start with the first one. And by the way, um, I'm going to need some questions because I'm probably going to have to record, pre-record rather than live, at least one more episode between now and when I come back. Possibly three. I'm going to try not to, guys. I really am. But uh, time delay, internet, and then trying to sleep. Um, and by time delay, I mean time zones. So, all right, first one. So much time is spent in class developing physical skills and strength. What about developing chi or inner strength? It's a great question. Why do we not spend more time with that? Uh, I think there are a few reasons. One, it is more difficult to develop inner strength than outer strength. It is harder to show someone that they have developed that. We live in a skeptical society, so people are less open to talking about, learning about, working on some of these more metaphysical skills. But I think if you've spent a lot of time training, whether you try to or not, you are developing some of these things. Inner strength comes from discipline and courage and perseverance. All the, the qualities that you kind of have to have to progress in nearly any martial arts school. So while developing inner strength doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you know, shooting energy balls out of your hands. There's a Street Fighter reference right there. Whoa. Um, I was a Ryu guy, not a Ken guy. Um, it doesn't mean that we're not developing it. When I had my school, and honestly, if I was to have my school again, I would be teaching these things more tangentially. Pe bring people through some, some meditation, help people work on relaxation and speed, developing speed and power out of uh, sudden movement, 
And from that calm place, that meditative space, you start to understand who you are. And I think that that's in, easy is the wrong, simpler place to work on inner strength. Next, what is one thing you wish more people knew before going into competition? Doesn't matter. The pressure people have on themselves in competition, in martial arts competition anyway, and in most competitions, 100% of that pressure is coming from yourself. Unless you're one of a select few who is a true professional athlete and your paycheck rests on your performance, it doesn't matter. I have two questions that I ask people. When, that, when I see them at the end of the day at a martial arts competition. Did you have fun? And did you learn something? And if you can check both of those boxes, you've improved and you will get better next time. And it was worth the, the investment of time and money. If you don't have fun, you're not going to be getting as much out of it as you could. And let's be honest, you should be doing things that are fun. There's enough that we do in life that isn't fun that if you don't enjoy competitions, probably shouldn't do. At least not very many. I think there's value in doing, you know, a few just to, to experience it. But the learning something part. There's an education that comes from that intensity of practice, uh, intensity of, of the experience of competition, especially if they stress you out. You learn a lot. And by competing some people tend to do their best they do they put in more effort i've known plenty of people like this myself included who perform at a higher level in competition than they do in practice you get some people who perform worse you get all sorts of things and by training well competing by going up against people who are maybe from different schools different styles you observe you learn you come up with some things to improve. It's not that serious. It's okay. That $3 trophy you just won, it's not going to change your life. What are some low-cost ways a school owner can improve their school? Hmm. There's a lot you can do with PVC and foam noodles and x-ray film. So I'll give you some examples of those three things. Foam noodles are great tools to develop tactile feedback in striking people from different ranges and, and such. Especially if you're working with children and you're trying to avoid giving them the consequence of, of actually getting hit and potentially injured. So imagine you take two foam noodles and well you could start with one and you're swinging it and you're trying to hit them and they're blocking it. They're using their blocks, right? However you block. And then if they get to the point of doing that, they can, you can use two. You could even develop drills with multiple people swinging those things. On Martial Arts Radio, we talk about, we've talked about some of the more advanced sparring drills that I teach when I travel around, when I do seminars. And... There are ways you could do the same sort of concepts with younger people with foam noodles. What's the nice thing about a foam noodle is that everybody knows they're not going to get hurt. And thus they can relax a little bit, have fun, and get the, the, the purpose of the drill. They can, they can really dig out your intention. PVC, you can do things like swing it low and have people jump, swing it a little bit higher, have them duck. You can use the, the, the foam noodle as well. You can take smaller PVC, and most of those foam noodles have a hole. So you can stick the PVC in the hole of the noodle. So now you can develop all sorts of training weapons, you know, like a training sword. You can make your own kind of knockoff sword with a PVC and, and foam on the end. Uh, maybe wrap it in duct tape to hold it on if you want to do it like that permanently. You can set up if you want to teach staff, you know, bow, fighting, 
I'm not going to call it a bow staff. That, for some reason, makes I understand why. But for some pe reason, people get really upset about that. You could foam over some of the ends and give people the option of experiencing sparring with weapons. Uh, that PVC can be used in, in a number of different ways as well. And then the x-ray film, you can have people hold it and drop it and use it as a target. You can even try to hold it yourself and drop it and, and hit it. There's some great stuff in there for reaction and for speed. Now those are some examples of things that you can do that you would buy for training tools, but there are other ways that you can improve the school. But number one, make sure it's clean. Make sure every single corner is clean. And if your school does not have a culture where everyone contributes to keeping the school clean, I would advise you to change that. I think that is something that is so paramount to building the proper culture of keeping people invested in their school. When people feel like a space is their own and they have input and say and a sense of belonging there, you're going to have far less turnover. So if you haven't, if, if you're the only one that cleans your school or you have someone come in and clean it, start making a slow transition into having everyone help. If you had, even in, 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 in your classes, the first five minutes of class, once a month, be everyone go around and clean. You know, here, you take a spray bottle, you take a mop, you take a dustbin. What would 20 or 30 people do in five minutes? in a school. In most schools, that's going to be pretty darn good. To put two people on each window, bam, 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 everything will be clean. If you've got 20 people, five minutes, that's like one person cleaning for an hour and a half. When people take pride in their space, good things happen. So there are two different ways that you can look at it. Low cost ways to improve things. Improve your drills, improve your culture. And that's what we got for questions. I need some more questions. I'm going to have to do at least one of these upcoming episodes pre-recorded. Give me some questions to answer. Please, please drop them below. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, turn on notifications. Other than weird times like when I'm traveling, we do the show every weekday morning, 6.30 a.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube. And even if it's pre-recorded, it's going to come out that time. I have not missed an episode other than... Memorial Day. I intentionally did not do one that day uh, in I don't know how long. It's been a very long time. We've done hundreds of these episodes and I like doing them. They help me wake up. If you want to ask me a question, the best place to do so is below or you can email me jeremy at whistlekick.com. You can catch this show on YouTube, go to firstcupwithjeremy.com or in your podcast app. Now we're at 18 minutes, so that tells me we had some good questions that I enjoyed getting into. I hope you have a good weekend. I'm going to have a great weekend. I hope you also have a great weekend. There. Your homework. Pick one thing that you can do to make your home better for free. What is one thing that you've always looked around and said, you know... We should move this from here to here. We should, um, we should stop doing this. The dishes need to go over this counter or this cabinet. It won't take you long. Take 15 minutes today. Do something that makes your life better. If it's really got to involve money, then, then that's fine. But all too often, we focus on these big things that make life better. It doesn't have to be big. It can be small. It could be getting rid of some things that are driving you nuts. It could be taking 15 minutes to make tomorrow's lunch so you don't have to go out and buy it or something. We've got a bunch of people all competing tomorrow. Team Whistlekick, good luck, everyone. You know, you're doing great. I'm looking forward to seeing all the photos. I'm sorry I won't be there this time to see it. Yeah. All right, I hope you all have a good day, good weekend. See you back here on Monday. Take care. Peace.